Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, the audio version of our Facebook Live series, Art Talk Tuesday. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and I am so excited that you're here to catch the weekly replay of my laid back yet very inspiring conversations with other full-time professional artists. The purpose of this series is to show aspiring artists like you that it is completely possible to make a great career out of this art thing. And if you ever want to join us live and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop over to facebook.com slash groups slash artist academy every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll see you there. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time art business. I've been a professional artist for over five years with paintings in several different countries and a client list that includes high-profile companies such as Bass Pro, O'Reilly's, Duck Commander, and many, many more. So I figured out what it takes to build an art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. Go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. This week, we are switching it up a bit, and I'm showing you a recent Facebook Live I did inside the Advanced Membership with our very own Jennifer Halterman. Jennifer joined the group when it first opened, and she was one of the very first members I ever virtually met. (laughs) She's actually a part-time artist, full-time life coach, and I was thinking one day, you know, I bet she has a lot to offer this group if I just asked her. And boy, does she. This was such a special conversation that after we were done, I was like, hey, would it be okay if I put this in podcast form? Because I think everyone needs to hear this. Jennifer has such an inspiring story. She talks about how to overcome anxiety and self-doubt in order to live your best life and move your art career forward. Let me know what you think about this week's Art Talk with Jennifer Halterman. So yeah, I wanted to get you on because you are a life coach. And so I I just want to really just know more about that and see if we can kind of relate it to like the art world. Um, I know, like, okay. especially myself, like, so y- I want to get you on because you, so your Instagram name is Lighten Up with Jen, right? And so yes. you always seem to so, like, <laughs> lighthearted and just, like, look at on the positive side. And I'm like, you know, we could all learn from that. <laughs> so, Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. So, yeah, if you just want to mm-hmm. kind of talk or let me know if you want me to like direct us in any way but I don't want to like you I just want you to kind of do your thing I guess (laughs) okay cool um let me tell you why lighten up with Jen okay yeah um uh I had a podcast podcast called everyday joy and this was back before they were called podcasts they were internet radio (laughs) and I started back in I think 2008 2009 and it was you know crazy international sensation because it was new and everyday joy the message was every moment of every day we're all making choices we can make them from love or fear that's up to us and so the message was about feel your fear feel your emotions don't deny it but don't let your fear make your choices and I did that for years and years and then in um, 2013 major tragedy happened in my life and my daughter and her fiance their five dogs so my five grand dogs and my daughter's pregnant at the time were all killed in an accident and it was horrific yeah and i had to decide if i was going to let it destroy me yeah and so my message just changed and became lighten up because that's something Kelsey would always say to me was lighten up mama lighten up (laughs) and so that was like our joke was like lighten up you know it's all good come on what can we do how can we have fun so lighten up with Jen became my anthem to me yes 
Okay. Uh. So when I look at life now and I look at art because the first time I ever put paint on a canvas was after Kelsey died. Wow. I had never done art. Really? And so, yeah, yeah. And so my first piece, actually one of my very good friends came over to the house and she had her paints and canvas. She said, just put it on the canvas. And then I would dance because that was our thing. We would dance it out. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go back to the canvas and we'd dance it out and I'd go back to the canvas. And the piece is called Grief. I'll post a picture of it in the group. But, um, and what it did was it gave me a way to express what I didn't have words for. I'd been talking. I was a podcaster. I'd been talking and talking and I didn't have words for that. Yeah. And so when it comes to why do I look at the lighter side, it's because actually I am choosing. I'm choosing if grief and death and I have a chronic illness and so I've been, you know, I've had cancer stuff, I've got MS, I've got all these things. I know I've got a hole in my heart, all these things. <laughs> Any minute I could be done. So what am I going to do at this minute? Yeah, wow, that's and, powerful. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, and so that's my approach. And that's why I'm a life coach. And that's why uh, my thing, and this is my, my life tagline is, it's not what I'm doing. It, it is how and why I'm doing it that matters most. Because I can be painting, and the why can be because I'm frantic and scared and I need to pay rent. Or I can be painting because something wants to express through me. Or I can be painting because I'm excited and ecstatic. Or I can be painting, you know, and the why might be because there's some grief that needs to move through that I don't have words for. So paint can express it. Wow. Uh, yeah. So that's where I'm coming from. You have me like <laughs> jaw on the floor. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sorry about no, that. No, that's Having to hold the camera, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's that just like puts it all into perspective too. Like, I mean, just and you, I mean, you are living what you what you hope to like very much so. Especially like looking from the outside, you're very much a lightened up person. Like, like I was saying before, <laughs> I really knew that. Yeah, that's oh, wow. Well, Thank you. I'm a, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> like, you got me off of work. I just, I'm just I'm thankful that you shared that and that you live like that and can be a, just a kind of a, an example of that as well. Thank See, Lisa says, yeah. Lisa says, yes, painting through grief is so helpful. Yes. So powerful. Yeah. Anything, any strong emotion. I mean, when we were preparing, I got married in my backyard, and when we were preparing, and everybody's like, what are you doing with your time? I'm like, I'm painting fence panels. <laughs> I was like painting these eight foot by six foot fence panels of art because I had so much energy that had to go somewhere. <laughs> and so that's what I did with it, you know, and I learned that was a great outlet. You know, it was a great outlet that, um, gosh, I didn't numb out. I didn't pretend. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was angry, I could do a lot of good art. There's some good art that comes from that deep passion. Yeah. And I just learned if I shut it down or deny it, I get sick. Oh, what do you mean? Yeah. Um, if I hold back, I will actually get a, a flare up of MS. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, Our bodies are yep. amazing things. <laughs> yes. Yeah, in fact, the, the doctors, you know, they kind of gave me an expiration date. They're like, you'll be lucky to be alive at, and I passed that by, I don't know, I think I'm on 10 years Wow! Now. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and so to me, I'm like, why would I hold any of life back when I know how fragile it is? Yeah, that's so true. So, yeah. okay, so like say, is there like a process in your mind that – if you if you're like I just kind of having a bad day or like something happens, is there something mm -hmm. you can to get yourself out of it? Just asking for asking for myself, really. <laughs> <laughs> you're so cute. Yeah, you know I do a number of things. Um, I breathe, oh. I move my body, and I make sound. So, oh. um, 
just to get moving, just to get the creative juices flowing, I do some breath work, whether I'm just standing and breathing in front of the canvas. Like, I, I make sounds, <sighs> okay. you know, there's like, <laughs> I do. And I make ridiculous sounds like, <laughs> you know, if you've ever gone to laughter yoga or you've ever seen a, a tribal Native American or indigenous ceremony, they make sounds that don't have to do with words. They don't make it make sense. And so I use my breath to make sounds leave my body. And sometimes it's soft, sometimes it's loud. And then I move according to whatever that is. And inevitably, <laughs> I end up dancing with the canvas. <laughs> so I end up like, you know, like, oh, my wife's always just laughing at me. She's like, you're literally dancing out there. And I'm like, I know, I know. I know. What? Now you know why I'm so tired when I paint. <laughs> Because it's just coming through. Yeah. And that keeps me from being stuck the most. Oh. Yeah. And movement. Breathing, movement, and sounds. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe it's just like an, a release of energy kind of a thing. Like mm -hmm. out with the bad energy. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. If the creativity is stuck in me then instead of trying to move the creativity, I move me and allow the creativity to do what it's going to do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I got <I> gotta... uh, <laughs> like, ah. like, to like, <laughs> see your painting. I want to know what you're painting. It's like, I can imagine you dancing with a painting, but I can't imagine what's on it. And so, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it's really interesting. And that's another part of it is I'm very, I'm an intuitive painter. Mm -hmm. Like I can't, I can't, um, well, I've got one piece. It's called The Sun. And there are many people who want... A duplicate they like I want a version of the Sun I'm like yeah well it's not gonna be the same <laughs> because I follow the intuition and every time that I do when they say this is me this is me oh. because for me if I'm painting a like a commission piece like right now I'm actually at the house where the butterfly that I'm painting in the yard is yeah. um, that butterfly is not my butterfly that is Judy's butterfly. Yeah. So I'm thinking about her. And if I don't know who's going to own it, I just tell the painting, what energy is here? Is it staccato? Is it flow? You know, is there a little bit of like chaos to it? Is it soft lines? Is it harsh? What is the energy that I'm feeling? And that's what I follow. That's why I dance with it because the energy comes through me. So I'm, I'm clearly a very intuitive painting, <laughs> very intuitive artist. So I'm just following the energy. And I think that that's definitely, I mean, there's a lot of intuitive artists out there. Um, but I think that's why I trust it. Yeah. Because if I'm attached to what's going on the canvas, that means my critics on board. Okay. What do you mean by that? Yeah. And so if I'm, if I'm trying to appease a critic, okay, yeah. then I'm not allowing the, the art to move through me. I'm kind of being the boss of the art. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you've seen any of the um, work by Brene Brown, she talks about the person in the arena, right? Where she does that quote of, if you're, in, if you're not in the arena, I'm not interested in your feedback. Well, that's mm. where the critic is, is outside the arena. Mm. But if I get rigid in myself, the critic's in my head. Okay, okay, I got you. <laughs> this is just a new approach that I never even thought of to, to try. Right? And it makes me want to try it now. Well, okay, so how do you start? Okay, so when you're doing a painting and you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it for someone you just kind of, you just kind of listen, mm -hmm. right? You just like kind of mm -hmm. shut yourself up and you just listen. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that yeah. would take some practice. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. It's funny because like I am so not there when I'm painting. I'm listening to a podcast or a book just so my right. my brain can be occupied and I do that. So I don't mm -hmm. like to be still with myself like ever. Mm -hmm. I need to like be doing something or be like have something going on. So... Right. Just that being still and listening. Mm -hmm. huh. You know, one of the things that I do when I've got, because I 
because I do coaching and I do painting, I've done some coaching processes with people with paint. Okay. Yeah. And if they are, if they can't get out of the mind, then what they'll do is they'll have a canvas that is for that, that chatter. Mm -hmm. And when the chatter gets loud, they'll go over and they'll paint. And usually it's pretty, um, almost like childlike and they'll be like scribbling, you know, and it's agitation yeah. and they're trying to control it. And then they'll go back to the piece where the flow happens. So when that, so they actually work on two pieces. And then I have, I had a, one client that we worked on a fence panel together and she did this amazing piece. And then I gave her paint filled eggs and I told her to ruin it. <gasps> And she was a perfectionist. Oh! Corporate America perfectionist. And she's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, how attached are you? And so she ends up like throwing one and then she looks back at me and she is so excited. <laughs> and she, <laughs> she now is like, oh, I feel so good. And she's just <laughs> chucking these eggs full of paint and they're splattering all over. <laughs> And she started running with the eggs in her hand and slamming it on the paint. And then she lay, we laid the panel down and she just drizzled and threw paint at it. And she said she was so much happier with the end piece of the chaos when she let go of the control than what she was satisfied with with the controlled piece in the beginning. And so I think that for many people now, now granted, if you're doing logos and stuff, come on, we got to be precise. <laughs> yeah. And I, I do, there's total space for that. <laughs> but I think that if we'll give ourselves permission as artists yeah. to do it quote wrong. Okay. Yeah. If we get all that permission out, then when we're doing the very straight lines that you were taping off and you were doing so precisely, <laughs> all of that pent up, I don't want to have to do it right. <laughs> I want to play. Yeah. Has had a it's had room to go play. Yeah. Hmm. And it is a little bit more permission to to do something precise that you're proud of, but you're not denying the side of you that is spontaneous and is creative and does want to play and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Does that help? Definitely, definitely. Like <laughs> lately I've been doing stuff for other people so much that I'm like, I really mm -hmm. want to do a rainbow animal, but I just need to like carve out time to do it. I <laughs> just mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Right. And everybody has their style that equals play to yeah, them. That's my play. <laughs> right. One of my friends, she loves mixed medium. So she's all she does these crazy layers. And there's like a, you know, egg carton <laughs> sticking out of it. And I'm just mesmerized by it. But to her, that is how she brings play into it, is by adding dimension. I want to add glitter, really. <laughs> That's what I want to do. <laughs> I love that. And gold leaf and stuff. So like, I want it to be like glittery gold leaf. That's my play. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, I do. yeah do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Lissa says, I just envision you dancing like the girl from Legend and the black dress in that scene with the canvas. I laughed, but also beautiful. <laughs> oh, yes. Totally. Yes. <laughs> she also says, uh, yeah. chatter painting. I need that in my life so bad right now. My head is chaos. Mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She's been through yeah. her as well lately. <laughs> just with Has this she? stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one of the things is, um, that's what Zen Tangles does for people. That's why that became the thing. That's why adult coloring books became a thing, is because people get, get that mm -hmm. chaos out of their mind just and put it on a piece of paper. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I, I love I it. I like giggling thinking about it. I'm like, oh, I need to like... Uh, that's so funny because really right before we got on this, I was like, I was looking at my calendar. I was like, okay where's a day that I can do a rainbow animal painting? And so I'm going to do it. I'm going to add glitter and I'm going to add shiny things. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so it's most so of your stuff you um, abstract that you do when it, when it comes to like the, mm. the freedom stuff? Or? Oh, wow. You know, it, it does end up being kind of crazy like that. Yeah. Like I've got a dragonfly that, um, I've done, and when I figured it out, what we could remember, what we could count, there are 16 layers of that painting. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, so like there's words underneath it. There's symbols underneath it. There's stencils to give texture. There's all these things. And it wasn't until I was doing crazy shapes that all of a sudden I stood back and went, there's a dragonfly here. Oh. And that's when I started like outlining the dragonfly. And yet there are like one, two, three, four different areas around the dragonfly that's kind of like the background that are all very different. Very different textures, mm. very different colors, mm. a different feel. And and so, yeah, most of it is, even if it's like the sun, you know, there's so much depth to it that I think that gives a lot of life to it. So it is abstract, even if you can see what it is, mm -hmm. you know, it's not all the fluid art like that, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, in fact, I, I should have brought deep in. Um, one of the pieces that I love the most, it was actually an African sunset. And one day, <laughs> something overtook me. It was one of those crazy moments. And I just walked by the room and I looked at it and it was on, it was, you know, the long ways. And I stood it on its end and I saw deep, which is from black to purples into blues, all the way to black again. And here this painting has orange and yellow and purple and, you know, greens behind it. <laughs> And it turns into this deep, beautiful piece. I had no idea that's what was coming. Oh, wow. But the, from the moment I saw it, I had, thank goodness, Sherry was there. I said, I need you to come hold paintbrushes and hand them to me. <laughs> and when I started and I got done and I just kept going back and forth, back and forth, I'll post a picture of it in the comments. Um, I was drenched head to toe. It was so intense. It wasn't strenuous. But the energy was so intense that when I just stood back, I just, I wept. There was nothing to do but cry. Oh. And, and so you don't know, when you do it the way I do it, I don't know <coughs> what's under, when the final layer is actually going to be the final layer. Mm -hmm. And to me, that comes through life. Like, that's the life coach in me going, are we done yet? Well, this feels good. Okay, that's enough for now. Are we done yet? No. You know, I need I need some soft layers here. Okay, great. Are we done yet? No. You know, I need some edges and lines and craziness. Are we done yet? There's a dragonfly here. <laughs> and then it starts creating the end result. And when you think about life, okay, do you really know? <laughs> like, we, know we don't know. That's so true. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. You know, like, we have so many different lives that we live. Yeah in one span between birth and death that could really be divided up and you go, that was a life in itself. That 10 years of education or the 18 years of raising kids, was it, that was a complete life all encapsulated in that. Yeah. And so that's how I see paintings as well. So when people are like, I'm going through crisis, I'm like, okay, what's going on? And yes, you know, life affects it and all this stuff is going on, but what are you going to make out of this? Because your life is a piece of art. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a story. It just happens to not be on canvas or in a bound book. It's your, it's in your body. You're embodying your life, the story of your life. And so to me, just keep going through the layers. Yeah. And we don't know. Like the messy middle is not pretty always. Yeah. We, <laughs> <you know. laughs> and yet you're on your way to a masterpiece and you don't know it because you're going, why is that there? That doesn't belong here. Well, yeah, some marriages don't either. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, that was an oops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was an oops. We're just going to go with it and correct that really quick. It's a good thing with paint. You can always paint over it. Like you just move on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and give ourselves permission, you know? Yeah. I think that for a lot of artists, especially if they have any kind of self-doubt, it shows up in the art. Sadly, sadly, it shows up in the sale too. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It shows up in the pricing, it shows up in the negotiations, it shows uh, up everywhere. That's so true. <laughs> like, I think yeah. I've always undervalued my art forever. And my fiance, Ryan, he's always like, from now, now I always, before I price something, 
I'll run it by Ryan because he's just he's used to like the salesman game and he knows like how much time I spend in everything. I'll be like, hey, I think I'm going to charge this much. He's like, no. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, OK, I'll just charge more. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's a that's the weird thing is when we don't look at our self-worth or our self-value or how we hmm how we honor our time, yeah. how we honor our resources, how we honor our skills, it shows up there. Yeah. You know, when somebody, yes, I've been painting since 2013, but obviously based on our conversation, my life coaching since, you know, 2005 is in every piece of art also. Yeah. You know, so it's not just the time of the painting. They also get all the skills. They get all of the everything that went into it. Yeah. For and sure. you know it's not like okay go over price everything it's not that but how what's gonna honor you yeah that's my question what would what would honor you yeah. you know the piece that I call deep um, every time I walk in and I I see it in a it's in a sunroom it's just beautiful and I walk in and I look up at it it is being honored still <laughs> its environment honors it so you know, they say that the legacy is what you leave behind and what people think. How they remember you. It, you aren't your legacy. It's when you're gone. That's your legacy, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when I walk in someplace that is honoring my art, I think, whoa, if I was already gone, that would still be here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Art is such a good way to do that. Yeah. Huh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We're getting deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right? <laughs> I know. Lighten up with Jen. We're going to go no, deep. <laughs> you, I feel like you have to go deep in order to just kind of like, it's like a dive, you know? Totally. <laughs> you just come out. So. Yep. Sometimes you actually have to push off the bottom in order to come back up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and appreciate yep. what it's like up here. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, we wanted to talk a little bit about um, maybe just ways that people can like get to that level of like mm -hmm. just feeling good about their stuff or feeling mm -hmm. like they can sell. Like so, which I mean, in sales is really just confidence, you know. And which I'm still right. trying to learn a whole lot about. Like, and so it just you think it's just practice. You think it's just doing a lot of self work. What do you think? Okay, feel into the space where the lack of confidence is. Okay. And as cheesy as it sounds, ask, when am I being? Okay? So say I'm like, oh, I don't think I can charge this, and I don't know what to ask for, and then maybe I should just donate it, and, nah, 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 <laughs> and go, wait a minute, feel into that. Okay, hold on. What am I feeling right now? Mm. When am I being this scared? 90% of the time, it'll take you back to your adolescence. Oh. The when did I start doubting myself? It might be the day that you, you know, got kicked out of the spelling bee on the first round. It might be when you found your mom throwing away some of your art it from elementary <laughs> years. It might be when you got mocked or made fun of for something creative in school. But when am I being invites that to like reveal itself. And usually it's a scared child that doesn't want to reveal itself. I'm just saying. Yeah. And then you go, okay, here, I know your worth. I've got you. And you kind of like grow that part of you up and let it know your value is not, not based on that anymore. Your value is not based on, for example, I, I'm dyslexic. And so, I was in special ed because I couldn't read and I couldn't spell. Well, I thought I was dumb. I thought I was stupid. Oh. And then, you know, thank goodness, my seventh grade um, English teacher, <laughs> he uh, caught me passing notes and it was a poem. And he read it and he looks at me and he's like, Jenny Anderson, stand up on that chair. And I'm like, oh, because he used to make you read your notes. Out oh, loud. no. So everybody thinks I've, he, I, he, everybody thinks I got caught writing a note. Yeah. They don't know it's poetry. Oh, okay. And he hands it back to me and he says, read it proudly. 
And so he stood there like, he's this cute little guy. He stood there yelling at me like louder. And I'm standing up and I'm reciting poetry, you know, and the class is applauding and it was awesome and all this stuff. And he said, after class, come see me. I'm really proud of you. And I'm like, okay, I thought I was dumb forever, right? Yeah. And after class, he comes up and he says, Show, stand at the chalkboard and he had me write some letters and he goes, honey, you've been mislabeled, you're dyslexic. That's the first time anybody ever said the word to me. Wow, that's amazing. Right, so from that moment I stopped being dumb. Yeah, oh wow. So if you have a moment like that and you go back to it and you're like, oh that's the moment I decided I was dumb. That's the moment I decided I wasn't creative. That's the moment I decided I didn't have skills or talents, whatever it was. And then you go, oh, you know, it's a, it's a, it is a self-help practice, but Thich Nhat Hanh says they're their fear, or they're their child, they're their wounded one. I see you. I won't leave you. They're there. I accept you. And you're inviting that vulnerability to come up and go, Okay, and then you say, little one, whatever age you feel that is, you don't have to do the business anymore. I've got this. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then you allow that the child to heal by being kind and loving. Just as you would if your niece or nephew or your child walked in the room and you say, oh my gosh, somebody's mean to you at school, what would you say to that child? You would say, Oh, they're there. You are so much more precious than they know. That was very unkind, but that's not true. And let me tell you all the things I love about you. And when we say that to ourselves, we say to ourselves what we needed to hear the most that we did not hear. We kind of are growing that wounded child up so that it can incorporate into the grown up that we are. Because how many of us really have maybe, you know, a 12 year old or a 21 year old that has, you know, just got their first credit card running our business. Why are they doing that? It's because that's where we stopped believing in ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's where the most prominent wound is. So it's the boss. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm like trying to think on like 12 year old Andrea or whatever. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> like, why are you right. so shy? <laughs> like, oh, mm -hmm. like, oh, wow. You know, yeah. And be fun. You're good, you're good. You just practice, just practice like, okay, be as shy as you can. Like take on the body posture, be as shy as you can and go, how old do I feel right now? Oh. Or what flashes, what assembly, what school, okay. how old, where am I hiding? It'll, your body will not lie. Really? Okay. Your body knows. I'm so gonna do this later. <laughs> like, yes, good. I'm so gonna do it, because I've just always been quieter and just like mm -hmm. in social situations, it, it, I've just always been quiet. And so I was just like, I'm just introverted. Like, but yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> You could be introverted and powerful. Yeah. Oprah. You can be introverted. Oprah. Totally. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm, okay. I'm so going to do this later. <laughs> okay. It's, mm. it's funny that you said um, you got kicked out on the first round of the spelling bee. I was like, that was me. <laughs> but, but it did. <laughs> I remember what the word was too, but I don't know that it really like if that. I got over that. <laughs> That's <laughs> fun. That, I was like, oh. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How fun. Okay, cool. What else you got? <laughs> that was really good. I feel like. I feel like we should be paying you. Do for, you have a question? I know. Okay. Yeah, I know. We, we keep paying going. Paying you for therapy sessions right now. <laughs> um, I don't know. You're so okay, cute. Okay, so if anybody wants to do group sessions, you let me know. Yeah, I'll help you I, out. Because yeah. this is the sad thing. Creativity should not be based on money first. Yeah. Creativity should be expression. Business is business. Yeah. Yeah. It's creativity is creativity. Business is business. Yeah, which is why it's so hard for a lot of creatives to make a business out of art because it's like it's two separate things. It's like right. uh, it's two separate parts of the mind. And it is. Yeah. yeah. 
We should we, we yeah. should all do like a group coaching call and get us all on here and do our breathing yes. exercises. Right. <laughs> oh, we should. We should do that. <laughs> Show you all the steps and help you out because everybody has their own story. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. We're just changing the narrative. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing that I'm personally dealing with is public speaking. Um, I, like now I can get on like lives. No, no big deal. I like so when I first started doing these lives, it was like it really bothered me. And I would like I break out in hives whenever I'm nervous or whenever my heart rate goes up. Oh, yeah, I hate it. <laughs> and now I don't because I'm used to it. But Good. anytime I'm nervous, I, my skin will break out and like it's just like small hives and they they go away in 30 minutes. It's not like bad, but mm -hmm. I'm always aware of it. So I'm like, I will wear a turtleneck. I <laughs> will. So, but I, I want to get, I, I want to get to the point where like things don't like, cause that's just my body reacting to my heartbeat, like going mm -hmm. faster. And so mm -hmm. I want to get to the mm -hmm. point where that doesn't happen. Like when I am like, mm -hmm really nervous or because honestly because i'm about to get married and i'm like it's gonna happen and i'm like so i want to like test <laughs> myself yeah so like what's a good like so like you mm -hmm. mentioned breathing like something to just like calm myself down before i do something that's about mm -hmm. to make me nervous like i just got invited to do a public speaking thing and in, in front of like 40 people for 30 minutes and i'm like <laughs> i'm like oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah so i'm just like is it just i love that oh, yeah it's just like practice or just like maybe like something you can just like i don't know i don't know what's your diagnosis <laughs> it's practice okay. practice is one thing okay and that means Practice in really dumb ways, okay? Yeah, okay? Really dumb ways. I'm gonna give you one of my favorite public speaking training tips ever, okay? okay? <laughs> and that is speak in gibberish. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> you can tell a story and speak in gibberish and practice giving your talk or your whatever you're speaking about in gibberish, okay? And what it does is it allows your body to move the energy through the body and it allows you to practice breathing and not worry about what you're saying. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so if you've got a script, practice it in gibberish. Practice where you would add the emphasis. How would your hands be? How are you going to be expressing this? If they couldn't understand your words, would they know what you were saying? Okay? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of that. So talking in gibberish is really powerful. Okay? It's also really good if you've got stuff to say that you're afraid to say because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or you know you're just angry and you need to get the anger out. You can really just act, I don't give you an opinion. <laughs> And you don't have to apologize. <laughs> like, you're just moving the energy yeah. because it hives or the expression of energy that's trapped in your body that's coming out. So practice moving the energy through your vocal cords. Okay. They will practice your vocal cords <laughs> and breathing and staying present in your body and just keep practicing that as you're practicing your talk. So like alternate, you know, whatever it is. And so you give yourself that topic. But you also practice the energy side of it. A lot of people don't have any idea that speaking is so much more about energy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A lot about energy. So much more about energy than words. Okay. And just like breathing. So like maybe just train your body just to breathe while you're... Breathe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 It really makes a huge difference. So I would say um, there's that. And then, you know, they're there. Be kind to your body. Like, soothe your body. Yeah. Brush your arm. They're there. I won't leave you. I'm beside you. It's like when my children would speak and they would like, you know, in church or at school, whatever it was, when we were practicing, I would practice and I would like brush their back and brush their arm and it would calm their nervous system. And then when I would sit in front of them as they were practicing, I would pet my own arm 
and breathe and smile at them. Ooh. And in their mind, when they saw that, it would calm them. <laughs> yeah, it, cal okay. it calms me thinking about it weirdly. <laughs> Right, exactly. Because it's that nurture, that self-nurturing. So if we'll self-nurture, self-soothe, like, ooh, wow, I won't leave me. I'm not leaving me. You know, like, I'm not, I'm not backing down. I'm standing in my power and giving this, this, you know, talk on whatever it is. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna show up for myself. And then, because it's really easy. There's something I do. I do this. But I, if I'm talking, there's something, if my hand's on a podium, I will simply rub my thumb and my over my index finger, and it is as if I ran my hand down my back. It is so calming. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so the more you practice that, the more your body will respond because you're saying, I've got you. I'm here. You're not alone. Yeah. I'm not going to die. <laughs> I know I'm not going to die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah just saying that yeah. someone I read somewhere because I was looking up just like stuff to do googling it and someone her something I read it was like your body sometimes doesn't know the difference between excitement and nervousness and so like those are kind of like the same neurons or whatever it is and so I was like they're the same like, oh okay so I can if I'm nervous I'll just pr tell myself I'm excited then <laughs> then it yes. can be and it's just, it's the same. <laughs> like, so, yeah. <laughs> it is. So the, the interesting thing is, most of us, when we get scared, we hold our breath. Yeah. When we're excited, we breathe big. Okay, yeah. <laughs> when we're scared, we hold our breath. When we're excited, we, oh, I'm so excited. Oh, this is so exciting. And we actually add breath. That's what makes it so exciting. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you'll notice like, oh, wow, I need to breathe more. It sounds like that's like the number one homework, right? Yeah. Is keep breathing. Breathe. And that sounds so ridiculous. <laughs> but we don't, we breathe backwards in our society. We hold our guts in and we think that we're breathing with our chest where we need to be breathing into our belly and actually expanding the diaphragm. That's where we truly breathe. Okay. I'm practicing. <laughs> I love that. You're such a good student. I love it. I like, just tell me what to do. I'll so do good. it. Uh, let's see. I'll do whatever I can. Uh, Liz mm -hmm. says, I need to do that too. Self-soothing, much better than letting panic run around in my head willy-nilly. Yes. <laughs> yes. All of us. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I saw, we saw Toy Story 4. We just went and ran away to the movie theater today. Uh, I do that often. Uh, and um, Rex in one of the scenes says, panic is attacking me. <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like. <laughs> <It's> right. <laughs> right, right. And I'm thinking, and what's the response? You're going to run from it instead of going, whoa, I'm here. I'm not leaving. Okay, I know, I know, I get it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you oxygen so you can realize you are safe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like we're in a safe bubble. <laughs> like, yes, uh, totally safe bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if your body was a safe bubble. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Like you are you're in charge of being kind to your body. You're in charge of being kind to your body. It does not matter what was done in the past. It does not matter what you've done in the past. What matters is right now in this moment you get to choose if you're gonna be kind. And the kindest thing we can do is to give it oxygen. And let it know we're not leaving. We're safe. We're we've got us. Mm -hmm. You know we've got our own back. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do. <laughs> we do. Yeah. She says, "Ha ha, that's great. I'm gonna adopt that line." <laughs> right. <laughs> Panic is attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna be like, "Panic is making me excited. Yay!" <laughs> right. I know. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Uh, Lisa, do you have any questions for Jennifer here? Um, Kay yeah. Kayla, do you have any questions? I know you're on here too. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so this is what you do for a living. It is. Wow. <laughs> I, think, I think there's definitely a lot of need for it. <laughs> so I could see. There is. Yeah, I could see how. <laughs> we, yeah, sadly. Sadly, we live in a world that's become obsessed with what's wrong with us. Yeah. We're broken, self-help industry. I'm like, how about if we really figure out what's right with us? Yeah. 
Like a, like, uh, like a gratitude. Change the narrative. Yeah, like a, like a gratitude practice. Do you do something like that? You seem like someone who would. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I do. I, and here's my uh, approach to it. I can be super grateful for a lot of things, but I really love to appreciate something because when you talk about like the appreciation of your home, it means that you've increased the value of it. So anything I have gratitude for, I express something by increasing the value of that. So say I have gratitude for, you know, the housekeepers that come to the house. I'm going to express my gratitude, not just with the feeling in my body, but how can I increase their value? It can be, a, you know, a, not only paying them, but giving them a gift card. It can be adding a, an extra thank you card in the mail. It can be putting a public post on social media. It can be referring it out to friends to increase their value so they know not only am I thankful for what you do for me, but I'm so thankful that I want you to do it more for so many other people. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so anything I'm grateful for, I actually, I practice appreciation because I want to increase the value of it. I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you got you got my wheels spinning. I actually I have these like postcard prints that like right here, and I'm about right. to like I'm like ooh I can write on here and just like write thank you stuff. I just don't it's I just yes. don't even think about it, you know, until you, you say mm -hmm. it, or you don't think about it until someone does it for you, and you're like oh, and then right. it's just like a an effect like that. Oh man, right? Yeah, one of my one of my biggest things, and I say it probably too often, to be honest, it's, it gets a little old. And that is, I always ask, it doesn't matter if it's what I'm eating, it doesn't matter if it's what I'm drinking, it doesn't matter the clothes that I'm buying, if it's a movie we're going to see, it does not matter. I always ask, does this feed my aliveness? Ooh. Ooh. Does this increase my vitality? Does this stir my aliveness more? Because if it doesn't, this is not for my highest good and I'll make a different choice. I like that. Hmm. Yeah, so when I look at the people in my life, it does this feed their aliveness? Am I a contribution to their aliveness? Oh, yeah. Because if, if I am, then what does that look like? You know, do I know their favorite color? Do I, do I have any idea what it means to them to get a postcard in the mail? You know, do they know what it's like that instead of just a text, I actually send my voice as a message so they hear me? And and so I pay attention to those things because being a contribution to the aliveness of others feeds my aliveness. And that's how we give and receive simultaneously. And so when I look at that and I go, how can I appreciate something? Well, not only is, does this feed my aliveness, but how can I be a contribution to the aliveness of others? Yeah. Ooh, that's something I really think about too, honestly. So that's, I mean, except for, I mean, I guess students I, is really where my focus is at, but yeah, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, just, just yeah. in daily life too. Yeah. Oh, you're just giving mm -hmm. me a big slap of reality, which is great. <laughs> like, that's amazing. <laughs> well, it's, it's so funny. Just today, we, we were hanging out at the house here, and Sherry comes running out. She's like, hire an ice cream truck. <laughs> and we are laughing. Like, you got to understand, we've got a 40-something, a 50-something, and a 70-something running down the street to find the ice cream truck just because we can, yeah. right? We played with the ice cream lady. She was a hoot. She was just laughing, and we had this great time. And we were like, how can we support you in spreading the word? She told us how. She goes, oh, if you did this, if you posted on social media, there's, our, there's how you can do it. And we're like, we'd love to. So we made sure that we did. And we made sure we took pictures. And we made, you know, and she told us her schedule, when she'll be back in the area. So that we can then say in the neighborhood, we're going out for ice cream today. Who's going to be there? Yeah. And that to me means so much more than just, I got ice cream, you know, <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. That was great. But we were literally like giddy little girls standing out there picking out our ice cream off the pitcher menu on the side. Like even to the point she said to one of them, 
what kind of ice cream do you want, chocolate or vanilla? She goes, the white kind. <laughs> we start laughing. White? She goes, oh, that's weird. Like, she was like, I was just six. <laughs> I can't say vanilla. <laughs> it's the little things. The white kind. <laughs> yeah, it is the little things. And, so, and that's, you know, lighten up right there. Like, right there. That's it. What can you do in this moment? Yeah. To lighten up whatever you're doing. Yeah. I yeah. I have so much to learn from you. And like my fiance too, like he is like anything we do is just the best thing ever. <laughs> like for him and I'm just like, right. okay. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> like, like That's awesome. literally anything. If I'm like, Hey, I need, I really need help painting this. And it's like super hot out. He's like, it's fine. <laughs> like, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's go. Like, <laughs> okay. I know. Right. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, Kayla says, does she have a podcast? I would love to listen to her every day. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are so sweet. Actually, I am launching a new podcast. Ah! Oh my gosh. I'm, I, I know. I know. I'm actually going back on the air and I'm doing it. And it, the podcast is going to be called Perceptions. So I will let you know as soon as it airs and it's going to be within the next couple of weeks. Ah! So thanks for asking. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, <laughs> if you look at, there's some old ones out there. If you go on Apple or wherever you find podcasts and you look up Seducing Aliveness, there's like 30 old episodes. It's a show I did with a, a co-host and, and the approach is a little different, but some people might love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you could find that until the other one's out. Okay. <laughs> Okay, cool. Okay, so yeah, so it's coming out in a couple of weeks. I'll I'll definitely I'll share it on my social media and all this. Stuff. Yeah, I think that's oh, awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, actually, yeah. I was thinking, um, it, would it be okay if I made this into a, a podcast, like us talking an, an episode? Okay, cool. This as, literally mm -hmm. as you were talking, it was like more people need to hear this. <laughs> like, oh. so, not just our group, but thank everyone. And, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. And and just so you know, um, if anybody wants to contact me, you can. Like, it. Here's the thing: how can I be a contribution to your liveness? Yeah. Aww. Like, that's it. And if and especially if you contact me and tell me topics you want me to talk about, give me a question, that kind of thing. It really, yeah. I'd like you know, I could do a monologue, but I also like to answer questions and such. So. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to friend me on Facebook or whatever on face Jen Halterman now is the Facebook page and lighten up with Jen uh, is on Instagram there's little underscores between it because that's just what was at the time yeah. I set it up <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> okay. but in the when you turned into a podcast I'll make sure you've got all the links mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. We should do this yeah. regularly, like like once a quarter or something if you want to. I would love that. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm happy to. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Do you have anything else you want to add? I, I'm i not sure where else to go <laughs> with this, but I, I'm sure there's so many. I'll, I'll just, I'll have to do a better job at just listing down questions or topics for the next time. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you'd like to add? That's awesome. <laughs> You know, all I would say to people is notice where you get super serious. Okay. When you get serious, that's a tourniquet on your creativity. Okay. Okay. Seriousness belongs in certain places in life. Uh -huh. But if you notice that your creativity is shutting down, ask yourself, where am I taking myself way too serious? I like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's always a clue when you get really serious. <laughs> and so just really just, you know, start asking those questions. There's just a few things in there like, you know, does this feed my aliveness? How can I increase the value of this thing that I appreciate? You know, what, what can I do for others to feed their aliveness? And when I also in deciding what am I going to do here, I always pay attention to how I'm doing it and why I'm doing it. If I have selfish ulterior motives, I don't do it. You know, if I'm not sincere, I don't do it. But how and why am I doing this? 
and then the what becomes alive. You know, you've seen people who do a piece of art and you could tell that the creativity is very structured and that's great, but they're excited about mm -hmm. it. And then you can tell people that the, the structure is super, you know, on point and very professional and they're flatlined because they're dead inside. Mm -hmm. You can tell. And so if you're going to leave a piece of art behind, do you want it to speak of your aliveness or not? Because that's what you're creating. Ugh, drop the mic. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you're so cute. <laughs> you make me want to go pick up glitter right now and like just go paint <laughs> glitter animals or something. <laughs> I love that. I can't wait to see what you do with glitter. This will be the next series. You've inspired my next series of just overly pink, glittery things. <laughs> Shiny, metallic. I love it already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. I mean, you have two raving fans on here. Lissa oh, says, right? Thank Mike you. drop in D. Kayla says, thank you. And they will say thank you. Yes, they love this. I'm so glad. You are you so welcome. It. I'm so glad you guys got so much out of this. I did as well. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. My pleasure. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Definitely. Have a great <laughs> night. Thanks again. <laughs> you too. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time art business. I've been a professional artist for over five years with paintings in several different countries and a client list that includes high profile companies such as Bass Pro, O'Reilly's, Duck Commander, and many, many more. So I figured out what it takes to build an art business. And now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. Go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. Also, if you ever want to join us live and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop on over to facebook.com slash groups slash artist academy every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I'll see you next week.